the, the crypto industry there had been effectively set back 10 years in banking terms. It's being locked out of the banking system. Hello, everyone. Today, our guest is popular YouTuber, crypto, Bitcoin investor, and trader Guy Turner, who in this video discussed the recent wave of banks collapsing, the Fed's strategy for the rest of 2023, crypto market price action, and Bitcoin price predictions. Bitcoin hit new nine-month highs on March 17 as the latest events in the growing United States banking crisis boosted crypto markets. Data from Cointelegraph Markets Pro and TradingView showed BTC USD hitting $27,025 on Bitstamp before consolidating. At the time of writing, the pair circled $26,500 with volatility ongoing after the Wall Street Open. A catalyst for fresh upside had come in the form of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet data overnight this showing almost $300 billion being injected into the economy as part of the banking crisis response. The event effectively undid months of liquidity removal under the Fed's quantitative tightening, and commentators were quick to call the restarting of the opposite phenomenon, quantitative easing. They'll tell you it's not QE, but the numbers don't lie. Roughly half of the reduction from a year of quantitative tightening has been erased in a week, trader, analyst and podcast host Scott Melker, known as the Wolf of All Streets, commented. Bitcoin thus followed a strong performance for U.S. equities the day prior. I think there are two suspects here. Um, crypto, it, this is, I, I'm, I'm with Ben 100%. This is not a crypto problem. This is first and, first and foremost on the banks, um, especially in, in SVB's case, uh, because they didn't hedge, they didn't hedge correctly. They had their you know, they were invested in long dated treasuries and they should have known that those treasuries would go down in value as interest rates rose. And, mm -hmm. you know, they knew that interest rates were going to rise. But having said that, I think the other the, the other um, guilty party here to a large extent is the Fed, because right. I think they they initially dismissed inflation, didn't they? They said this is transitory. And then. Uh, because they'd been slow out of the gates, they had to hike much more aggressively than they would have done. And if I remember rightly, this was the fastest in percentage terms. This was the fastest interest rate hike in history. So that's how, you know, that's how behind the curve they were. So although I'm, although I'm hesitant to say I, I, I sympathize with the likes of SVB, I do to, to some extent because they parked their assets in what they thought were, you know, the safest place. And they got caught out because the Fed had to, you know, the Fed basically dropped the ball. Yeah. So, yeah, this is this is 100 um, percent not not cryptos, not cryptos problem. I, I, I see it like I see it like a murder's taken place. You know, someone's been <laughs> someone's been shot and the, the cops are swarming all over the scene. And they've arrested the first innocent bystander um, who saw everything, who just so happens to be crypto. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's it, it, it's very much it's very much a failing of the banks. It's a failing of the fractional reserve system. It's a, and I think that is one of the reasons why crypto has become such a scapegoat. I think for a start, crypto is an easy scapegoat. It's something that has True. an image problem. Let's face it. I think we've talked about crypto's image problem a number of times in, in, in these live streams before. Um, and there's, there's no denying it. It does have an image problem. A lot of people are suspicious of it. A lot of people, unfortunately, have lost money uh, in it, uh, on it in the past. And so that makes it, first of all, first and foremost, an easy scapegoat to make. Oh, it's crypto. Crypto again. But also, I think because I think crypto is getting the rap because otherwise you have to blame you kind of have to blame the system in a way. You have to blame the, the, the whole edifice. And if if that was the case, if they were to come out and be honest about it and say, look, this is a failure of of the banking system. The Fed hasn't uh, the Fed hasn't done its job properly or the Fed was slow out of the gates. Then mm -hmm. perhaps you risk even you risk shaking confidence in the system even more. And obviously that is how bank runs start. It's all about confidence, isn't it? As soon as consumer confidence goes, as soon as depositors are worried about their holdings, that's it. And it's a, it's a race to the bottom. Um, 
I guess I mean the the big the big selling point with CBDCs is going to be convenience, and uh, you know there is there is no doubting that they are going to be convenient, and anyone any government rolling out any uh, their CBDC properly will make it will make it easy to use and will make it easy for people to access. And let's face it, people people take the path of least resistance. Not everyone, true. Um, but plenty Very of true. people do. Yeah, people's lives are, I think, in a lot of cases, difficult enough without having to to struggle with, you know, alternative systems of money. And it's going back to what you and Ben were, were talking about just, you know, a, a few minutes ago. You know, how do we how do we educate people? How do people, you know, how do we stop making the mistakes that we did last time? And I think one of the problems is that crypto is not very user friendly at the moment you've got things like setting up a wallet i've talked exactly. to people i mean sorry rob go on no no just say exactly this is the, the, the thing that people talk to me about like well i just haven't used crypto i'm like have you tried to do uh, use a dex as a normal average person it's a it's something just ridiculous sorry go ahead yeah well with i mean yeah and i i mean set, things like setting up a wallet setting up your own hardware wallet i've spoken to a few a few people it's like oh yeah i've got one I just I'm a bit nervous about the whole process. <laughs> and I think, well, maybe I've just set up one hardware wallet too many and I'm I'm blase about it. But, you know, it is it is pretty straightforward. But then, you know, I'm used to it. So I guess it's about, you know, part of it is going to be the and this is why things like this is why so many people are happy to stick with the fiat system that we have. But people like Visa and MasterCard have done an excellent job of making everything quick and easy. And, you know, they could start with something that would that would probably make sense to a lot of people. They could say, all right, well, gambling is a huge problem in this country. So um, you won't be able to you won't be able to spend your CBDC. You won't be able to spend Bitcoin uh, with any at any gambling uh, outlet. You won't be able to spend it at the bookies or at the horses or whatever. A lot of people would say, "Well, that's that's not a bad thing. Gambling is gambling is bad. Gambling is ru it ruins lives. Gambling, you know, causes all sorts of social problems. That makes perfect sense to me. And you know, it, then it's a slippery slope. And you know, you start with one thing that's that's kind of fairly wow. popular. Okay, you can't spend it in gambling. What what's next? You can't spend it on alcohol." for instance. And yeah. all of a sudden, it's, you know, you, you can't stop. It's a genie, I don't think, that could be put back in the bottle. Um, okay, we could be staring down the barrel of, of the economy breaking of a really bad recession, but runaway inflation is, is way, way worse than, you know, than, than anything pretty much a recession can, can throw at us, I think. So mm -hmm. I think that's worth bearing in mind. I, I, I too think probably a 25 uh, a 25 point rise at the at the meeting next week that would that would kind of round off inflation at five at uh, round off rates at five percent right so uh the the kind of headline inflation number at the moment is six percent so I wonder whether the fed's best move is is to raise at the next meeting bring us up to five and then keep it at that figure keep it at five percent keep rates at five percent for as long as they possibly can um at least until that headline inflation figure comes down because the drop okay the drop to the fed's two percent target is that's a long way to go but the drop to five percent so rates are in line with inflation that's a lot more doable on the face of it i think so i wonder whether hmm. i think there's a good chance that 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 could be the strategy that uh, that they're going to take. Uh, bring us up to five, and then see if they can at least get inflation down to the same level as as rates. And then perhaps they can talk about they can talk about mm -hmm. dropping rates after that. I would I, I would add to that and say we've had plenty of reasons to be bearish over the last seven to fourteen days. Um, true. You true, know, true, true. we've been. The, the crypto industry in the US, which let's face it, let's remember is crypto's largest market by a long way. The, the crypto industry there had been effectively set back 10 years in banking terms. It's being locked out of the banking system um, by a coordinated action by the administration. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Signature, it's becoming mm -hmm. clear, was was taken out deliberately you know, because of its crypto connections. So there are some huge headwinds for the industry there in terms of banking. Let's not forget the um, 
the SEC's Wells notice on Paxos, that 30 day period, I think, has expired now. So, I mean, what happens now? Do, uh, is the SEC going to sue Paxos over BUSD? Are they going to go after some other stable coin issuer? Um, you know, they could use the events over the weekend with USDC. That could be, you know, that could quite well be a, a precursor to something worse. So, yeah, I, I don't. I, I completely, I completely agree with with Ben's timeline. I, long term, I'm extremely bullish, but in the short term, I think we have some huge hurdles to overcome. And you know, and then that's that's without even touching upon things like uh, high rates and 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 all the rest of it, and all the kind of macro factors, just the crypto specific factors in the U.S. and elsewhere, I think are worrying enough. There are good things on the horizon for crypto, but the time frame is a bit longer than I think a lot of people uh, are, are thinking. You know, it's not. I don't see it being in the next sort of three or four months or so, in the next you know until kind of until next year. We needs to hold $26,000. If that holds, 28 to 30K is next. If it loses 26K, I'm punting around 25K for some longs. Relatively easy to understand. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.